Hi, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and in response to our flat feet video, we are going to talk about footwear. There are a lot of shoes in the world. I mean, everybody's got a different type of shoe and everybody advocates a different type of shoe. I advocate being barefoot as much as possible when you're training so that your feet can learn to work. In Kung Fu and in many martial arts, you will train barefoot for long periods of time because they want your feet to work better. Uh, that's kind of changing now. You have to train barefoot, but then at some point you should also train in the shoes that you're gonna wear every day if you're trying to learn spinning back kicks or something. You should probably go ahead and put on the shoes that you wear every day and practice them both ways. Start barefoot, go to shoes. I travel a lot for movies. And you know what they don't like in hotel gyms or in gyms in the center of London is you taking off your shoes and walking around barefoot. Uh, they do not like that at all, uh, so you can't do that. Um, you get on the treadmill and you take off your shoes and your feet smell, they are gonna throw you out of that gym. That's gonna happen. Uh, and that's totally fine. We don't want some creepy dude with weird, gross fungus on his feet, you know, getting all over the treadmills, it's weird. There are a lot of shoes out there. This is a pair of no bolts. I bought them because they're cool because everybody at CrossFit has them. But they're super expensive. These are like $150. They are also very, very solid. They are a classic shoe. You will not find any Nike shoes or anything like that in my studio because I hate them and I think they suck. But you will find a pair of Nobles, which I wear sometimes when I go to CrossFit for fun to be part of the team. Are they good for you? No. My better CrossFit shoes are a pair of Zeros. And these, I wish they looked cooler because they are great shoes. They are super thin, they do all the stuff, they roll up, and they have a wide toe box. If you will notice, they are really wide across the front here, and this allows your foot to spread out when it hits the ground, so that when you're running, your foot can actually expand. The point of not wearing Nikes is they crush your foot and they try and make it into a sexy shape, that is appealing for people to look at, but they shove your foot in there and your foot ends up doing some kind of weird thing like this and then just slamming into the ground and a little, it's terrible. These are the best ones thus far. Oh. You can tell I've worn these a lot. I've had these for about a year now. I need to get a new pair. I'm just waiting for them to come in orange so that they match the color of my favorite CrossFit gym because we're nerds like that and we try to color coordinate. Wide toe box is the key feature of a good pair of shoes. Uh, but these are still relatively expensive. They are in the $100 range. And that makes them a little less common man than I like. I like everything to be common man. I like it to last forever. And I like it to be inexpensive if at all possible. Super fancy shoes from Germany that we got in Germany when we were in Germany this year working on a movie. Leguanos. Super, super roll up and fun. These have a much better sole on the bottom traction wise all these little nubbles dig into the ground very well the problem is is that they are a little bit tight over here in your pinky toe area i wish that they were a little bit wider across the top so that we could get better foot spread in them they are pretty cool looking shoes though and they're very thin um, so these i went back and forth between these and the zeros on this last movie for when I had to be in a gym and I couldn't be barefoot. And these ones are pretty fun. They're pretty fun to run in and to lift in and to do everything in. They are not as durable and they do not have anything up here on the toe, which I find kind of annoying because you do find yourself dragging your toe a lot when you're doing fight training or martial arts drills. And so I'm not sure about how long they're actually gonna last. They've got about three months in them right now and they look pretty good, pretty sexy looking still. Uh, they haven't gotten weird looking like the Zeros yet. Now for the most common man shoe that is the best. These are Feiways. And you will notice huge nerds wear these shoes. These are martial arts shoes from China. If you look at pictures of Shaolin monks, they're all wearing these shoes and training in the Shaolin temple. Uh, these cost like two or three dollars in China. Uh, and in America, you can now get them on Amazon. You don't even have to go to like weird martial arts websites or anything anymore. They, are, they were about 15 bucks. I looked for them yesterday and I think coronavirus has driven the price way up because now they're $28, which seems a little ridiculous for a $2 shoe. They are made out of just plain old canvas. 
and they are super simple. When the world ends and goes Mad Max, these will be the type of shoes that we'll start making again first. Big flat sole, super, super bendy. Absolutely the bendiest shoe, the cheapest shoe, the best shoe. It's got rubber up here on the toe so you don't scrape your toes as you're dragging across doing martial arts drills or doing whatever you're doing in the CrossFit gym. They are not structurally sound. Don't drop things on your feet. None of these shoes are structurally sound. Don't drop anything on your feet, just a general rule of thumb. And they do kind of get ugly and go bad. The great thing is you can take these and throw them in the washing machine and just wash them because they are just canvas. I mean, that is just canvas. There's no special materials or special fabrics in them. There's nothing crazy going on. They are just rubber and canvas assembled. These are a great shoe. They do have a little bit of an old school daintier toe box. I wish they had a bigger toe box. If these had a bigger toe box, they would be the best training shoes ever. I'm gonna show you a new pair, because those ones are good. This is what a brand new pair of Fadeaways looks like. You buy them, they're all sexy and pretty, and they're bright colored, and they will be that way for about a month. Uh, and then they will get ugly again, but that's fine. Even brand new out of the box. They are super scrunchy and super rolly. They're a little bit stiffer in the beginning, but that's fine. All you gotta do is wear them around for a week and they're gonna soften way the hell up. But beautiful canvas, super simple. The great thing about these shoes is I travel all the time and I travel to all types of different environments. So I usually have about seven pairs of shoes. You don't want your training shoes to take up much space. You want them to take up the least amount of space in your bag as possible because you're gonna have to have waterproof boots. You've got knee-high waterproof boots. You've got 30 pairs of wool socks for God knows what condition you're gonna be in. You've got uh, city shoes. You've got a pair of hotel shoes. There's, it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that you have to drag on a movie set because you have to have specific shoes for specific things. If you're standing outside in the middle of the rain in the forest in Romania, you need a very specific pair of shoes for that. This is not going to cut it. But you, whatever shoes those are, you certainly don't want to wear those in the gym. You need some shoes that are super small, super lightweight, that can be washed, super positive, throw them in a washing machine, and allow your foot to move to the maximum that it can move. To sum this all up, I do think that barefoot training is the best training. When you train away out of town, as I always do, you need to have some pair of shoes that allows your foot to move as much as it can, but still allows you to go to the gym to use the equipment. They have to have certain things. They have to be able to be cleaned frequently because they're gonna get super gross, super fast, and they need to be small and you go in your bag. Um, the lighter they are, the better they are. And the, if you can have two or three pairs, you can have spares because you will thrash them somewhere along the way. We talked about footwear here. The goal is to have a foot, uh, a shoe that is the flexiest it can be, that has the widest toe box that allows your feet to actually move and your toes to actually do their job inside of the shoe. And that's about it. If they cost 15 bucks, that'd be even better. 15 bucks is way better than a hundred dollar pair of shoes because you can buy how many pairs of shoes? Six pairs of shoes before we get to nine, get to 90 bucks, right? Yeah, six pair of shoes. So, Fayways, you can buy six pairs for one pair of zeros or for one pair of Leguanos, like, like one, the German ones.